Math falsifies naturalistic mega-evolution, part 15. Atheist mathematician, and scientist quote 30. Zoologist, Edward Blyth was well aware of the precision of adaptation at the level of varieties of species, but not above the level of species, he maintained. The argument he gave was a powerful one, and in the later enthusiasm for the Darwinian theory it was never answered properly. Most species are limited to a geographical area, with good adaptation to the conditions well inside the area, but with less and less good adaptation toward its boundaries. Why? Blith asked, if species can evolve to the great extent that would be needed to explain the differences between genera, families, orders and classes can they not evolve to the lesser extent that would maintain adaptation to and beyond the boundaries of their respective areas. Instead of doing so, however, species stay obstinately fixed, disappearing as the limits of their habitats are reached. According to Blith, this fact, which was the rule not the exception, proved that the capacity of the species to adapt must be limited, making what today we call Darwinian theory untenable. Atheist mathematician and scientist, Dr. Fred Hoyle. My comment. Dr. Hoyle is highlighting the zoologist Blythe's observational falsification of Darwinism for higher taxa. Natural environments are very commonly analog, not digital. I.e., they gradually grade from one environment to another. However, we observe that species inhabit each environment within certain geographical limits. Species do not commonly gradually grade from one into another, to match the gradual gradation of the environment. Instead, the species dies off when pushed to the boundaries of a given environment in a more digital than analog manner. Neo-Darwinians believe in near-infinite plasticity of creatures, to create the entire biosphere from a single-celled universal common ancestor. So, Blythe asks, if species from one higher taxon are able to morph into completely different species in a completely different higher taxon, as Darwinians believe, then why do we not commonly observe that happening in the gradations between environments? This empirical observation is actually evidence against the near-infinite plasticity of species, that Neo-Darwinism requires. There appear to be morphological and genetic boundaries between higher taxa, that species cannot cross. This falsifies the core claims of naturalistic mega-evolution, of near-infinite plasticity of species across higher taxonomic boundaries. Note. Atheist mathematician and scientist Dr. Fred Hoyle performed extensive calculations to determine if naturalistic evolution, random chance and natural selection, would work. And he found that it does not work, for any level higher than microevolution, i.e., adaptation of a species to its local environment, inside a genus or family. He published the calculations in a book titled, Mathematics of Evolution. The quotes above are from his book. Conclusion. In his book, Dr. Hoyle uses extensive mathematics to show that Neo-Darwinism is false for higher taxa. Neo-Darwinism is true for microevolution. I.e., random chance and natural selection can cause adaptation of a species to its environment, resulting in formation of varieties inside a species, or genus, but nothing more. Random chance and natural selection are not capable of creating the biofunctional information, and the large-scale changes, needed to create completely new body plans, and completely new higher taxa, such as kingdom, phylum, class, order. So, neo-Darwinism, random chance and natural selection, is false for naturalistic mega-evolution, i.e., the claim of naturalistic single cell to human evolution. And, this is the case for all naturalistic mechanisms in the modern synthesis and the extended synthesis. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.